Seven years since this all started. Was it worth it? Eh. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for King Kong vs. Godzilla. This is a film directed by Adam Wingard, director of films such as The Guest and the American version of Death Note. And this finally has King Kong, who was introduced, I think, in 2017, and Godzilla, who was introduced in 2014, and they fight each other. It's kind of what you expect, especially for those who saw Godzilla King of Monsters. That is essentially the same vibe as this film. Over bombastic and stylish fighting where nonsensical characters do nonsensical things essentially to try and have human elements when really you just want to see the monsters fight. And even though they actually do fight, you're somehow left a little bit disappointed. And you can't really explain why except for the fact that just it's not Pacific Rim. The film does have a lot of cool stylish aspects to it. I did enjoy the use of colors, lighting, even if a lot of it doesn't make any goddamn sense. Color scale and the lighting scale in this film is very, very entertaining. It's very visually popping. And when you see the monsters fight each other, when you see Kong engaging with Godzilla and vice versa, you're always entertained with what's happening on screen, even if it's not as well formulated as it could be. The issue that I had a lot with the big fights is something that was really prevalent in the Pacific Rim sequel, a little bit in King of Monsters as well, is that these guys are moving way too fast. At first they're moving slow with the giant weight of huge leviathans, as they should, but then they do have these bits where Kong is like straight up parkouring across buildings. I almost hate to say it, but I kind of wish I could Zack Snyder these scenes and just slow them down by maybe, I don't know, 10 or 20 percent just to get that weight, to get that feeling of these things being giant monoliths fighting each other. Which, speaking of which, there's a few things in the script that just aren't explained at all. Hey, remember all those monsters? that Godzilla was king of at the end of the last movie, where did they all go? There's very little dialogue kind of explaining what's happening except for the current events. There's this evil tech company run by this obvious evil Frenchman who wants to make something that can take on kaijus, and they try to throw in these two new characters, Rebecca Hall with the death girl who can communicate with King Kong, and then Alexander Skousgard who is just there. They have him as this guy who apparently has this hollow earth theory, and that's it. They spend the absolute bare minimum on these characters, because they know that you want to just see them fight, right? Even though that they do do that, there's only really three major fights in this whole movie. The first one is pretty great, the second one's pretty decent too, and the, and the third one starts off, gets really good, and then when you think it's about to go into like round 10, it's over. I was left really disappointed with the final fight because I was not expecting it to end that fast. And considering how over the top everything is, even down to the facial expressions, Godzilla has a lot of facial expressions in this film, far more animated than he has ever been in any other films. I guess they wanted to try and match the character personality that you get from Kong. This is far more of a King Kong movie than Godzilla. Godzilla is a secondary character through pretty much the entire film. He is not really there. He's an object. Really, I was hoping that they would both get equal screen time when really it's a King Kong movie. Now I understand that Godzilla's had two movies, so it's rightfully so that King Kong should have a second movie too. You really gotta balance that. You kind of have like a Batman versus Superman sort of situation. But even then, as terrible as that movie can be, that still has equal kind of ground for those two characters. Godzilla is very, very secondary, very rudimentary in this film. Either way, King Kong vs. Godzilla is fun, I guess, for dumb popcorn action. I think in some ways it's better than King of Monsters. At the same time, I think King of Monsters is better. But really, the best one still is Skull Island. That's still the best one, in my opinion. It's the most entertaining, it's the most well-formulated and it has human characters that you can actually kind of get behind. Really, it's just John C. Riley's character. Out of four movies, they only ever got one character that you actually genuinely cared about. And that's it. In the end, I'm going to give Godzilla vs. King Kong a 3 out of 7. 
I've just kind of so lackadaisically watched and enjoyed this film that I can't even remember which one is first. And that kind of gives you an idea of just how into this movie I was. And I've been waiting for it for a while. I might even see this again in a theater. I had to go and see it at a drive-in in my car in the rain, so it wasn't really that great of an experience, but that depends on whether the theaters open up here again. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.